All right, so for our particles, this is our source. And we can call all of these uh, black points, which basically have an age of zero, if we drop this into a pop replicate, or rather point replicate. And uh, let's set the points per point uh, to one. And I want to check this generate from attribute option over here, and the attribute will be density. So now only the particles that have a density above zero will uh, exist, basically. And we can go to the shape and let's uh, set the uniform scale to zero. So we will be emitting particles from all of these points. And let's maybe make our source last even less and uh, adjust the ramp for our density. All right, so from here I will drop this into a pop net. And let's go to the first frame and let's step inside our pop net. And we want for the source, uh, let's turn off guides and use all points. And all of these settings should be fine, so we will leave all of these as they are. And let's press play and see what we get. Alright, so we start to emit points and let's also give this a gravity as well. And we can see that in our source we are inheriting the velocity from the original debris source and let's maybe just scale this down a bit to maybe 0 0.7 and also I want to randomize this velocity a bit so let's go up and let's do the same thing that we did for the velocity source for our smoke and I will just grab this attribute noise and I will just place this here after our pop net and also inside this pop replicate over here we have to make sure that for attributes we copy all of the attributes and this is mainly to preserve the velocity of the points so we can see that without this option now our points don't have velocity so let's turn this on and if I go to my attribute uh, randomize or attribute noise rather we also add a little bit of noise to our uh, to our points and maybe we can readjust some of these settings Alright, and because we copy all of the attributes, we are also copying an age attribute and a life attribute as well, so this will mess up our particle simulation. Let's drop down an attribute rename after the attribute noise, and we only want to keep the V, so the velocity, and delete the rest of the attributes. Let's go back, and let's also set this to start at frame uh, 20, so like our smoke simulation. Let's go ahead and preview this. So they are inheriting the velocity and then they are being affected by the gravity. So this is perfect so far. Let's go ahead and, and we can now take care of the collisions. Let's first go to the VDB collision that we created for the smoke over here. And this will be the pyro collision. Uh, and this has two fields for the distance of VDB, the collision, and the collision valve, which is the vector VDB. And we are only interested in this collision field. So from here, I will just drop down a blast and let's get rid of our collision valve. So we only have this collision distance VDB. And from here, I will drop down a null. And let's rename this to pop collision. And let's grab this node and go inside our pop net. And for this, we want to use a static object. Let's point the SOP path to the pop collision and let's create a merge and merge this here and reverse the nodes by pressing Shift R. Okay, so maybe I will rename this to Fracture Collision. And in my Collisions tab, I want to use a, uh, let's set this to use Volume Collisions and we want the mode to be Volume Sample. And also because this is animated, we have to select use deforming geometry as well. So as I play the simulation now, we should be seeing our collision and we do. Alright, so this is working and we can see that this is pretty fast as well. So that's great. The problem here is that uh, our pieces have this hole here and that uh, means that our points will uh, also fall through the ground. So we also need to import 
or rather make them collide with this base that is underneath the this plane here. So let's maybe go up and we can go all the way up to our geo in it and this is the base basically that's underneath our fractured pieces so these are the pieces and this is the base and we have set up here a collision that we used earlier for our main simulation for the fractured pieces so we can simply grab this which is a packed object and let's just import this in our popnet so let's go inside here and I will let's create a separate collision over here so just grab these nodes and duplicate these and plug this here and this here and reverse the order and this can be the base collision and let's point this to our base geometry that we just grabbed and press enter and this doesn't have any animation so we can uh, turn this off use the forming geometry and this can be let's set this to use solver default and if we go in the bullet data we need to set this to create convex hull per set of connected primitives which will be exactly the same way that we set up uh, the same type of collision for our main explosion uh, simulation so if I press play we have our we can see here that we have our pieces and we can show guide geometry and maybe I can also turn this off for a second and let's just preview this okay so we can see that this is going to be the collision with the the base and if I press play let's just check that this is working and over here let's also not forget to go to this RBD solver and set the mode back to the default which is ray intersect so make sure that this is not using the volume sample method and we can actually go up and uh, let's go to our popnet and inside this object merge we can choose to only import the pop object so I will use object anything that has pop inside it so now we only export the simulation to the sub level and we can play this and see that uh, the particles are uh, these here that are laying on the base so our base is working hopefully we can tell over here there are some particles that started below our surface geometry and as a result this will uh, fall completely straight down and we can create a volume from this uh, base geometry and say that if the particles are inside of that volume that then uh, let's just delete them so let's go back here where we have our base from this geo base render uh, I will drop down a VDB from polygons so turn this into a surface volume and let's maybe drop this into a reshape and make this just a little bit smaller so in this reshape let's set the operation to erode and I can preview the geometry as well and we can see that the geometry is just slightly outside of my volume and maybe we can increase this erode value just a little bit more so from here I will drop down a null and this will be base VDB and I will grab this node now and copy so control C and let's go back to the pop simulation let's step inside and over here I can drop down a pop wrangle and I will set my input so the first input let's set this to a sop and point to our base VDB so here I will type float sample and I will set this to be volume sample look for our first geometry and this should be the first primitive and look at the current position of the point and then I can say that if this sample is less than zero so this will give me a negative value and it will mean that it is inside of the volume then I will just want to remove point so now we should call all of the points that are inside of the volume so if I press play let's go up maybe let's go to our popnet and all of the particles basically that would be inside of the geometry are now going to be called and we are still left with the points that fall right on the surface as we can see over here and we can see that these particles are kind of sliding a little bit too much so let's go inside here and for my pop object let's go to the physical tab and let's increase the friction quite a bit maybe to 0 0.9 and let's also turn on my fracture collision back on and let's go up and let's preview this now and maybe go to the cache here and increase the cache memory as well 
Alright, so this is the result so far and maybe I can also reduce a little bit the bounds of the particles as well. So let's go back here and to our pop object and reduce the bounds maybe to 0 0.5. So I want a little bit less bounds. Also let's go up and let's generate a rest attribute as well so we can color our particles. And let's re-simulate a few frames. And this should be enough. So from here I want to drop this down into an attribute VOP. Let's set this name to be set CD, and I want to use a noise to give uh, all of these uh, a little bit of a random color and create a more interesting look. And we want to generate this flow noise from the rest attributes. So this will uh, kind of make the noise stick to the particles. So I will drop down a bind and set this to three floats and set the name to rest. From here, drop down an AA flow noise. And if I plug this directly into the CD, we can we can kind of see the result. Let's also drop down a fit range between the noise and the CD, and let's promote some parameters. So let's promote frequency, amplitude, roughness, and from the fit, source min and source max. So if I go up, now we can play around with some of these settings, and I will reduce the source min, maybe increase the frequency, and maybe also increase the roughness a little bit. Okay. And we will use this black and white value as the color inside the render. So we will grade this pass inside of Nuke separately, but we only want some difference in the value of the color. So we can use this black and white, uh, the black and white value as a base. And we can see that we are working with 2 million points and this will all be rendered as spheres at render time with redshift. And I think this is fine. So maybe if you want more particles, you can go to this point replicate and you can go to the quantity and just increase the points per point. So if I set this to a value of 2, you will have twice as much uh, particles in the simulation. Well, I think this is fine. And we can see that the collisions are working and I can show all objects and preview with my geometry as well. Okay. So I believe this should be fine. And from here I can simply cache this out. So let's drop down a file cache. Or maybe we can just uh, duplicate the file cache that we used for the smoke. So let's duplicate this over. Plug this here. And this can be our particles. And I will save to disk.